Well, getting back to Collins, now Collins says that uh, ID poses a serious problem for Christian belief because it rejects Darwinian evolution, you know, which he says is supported by overwhelming evidence. We always hear this overwhelming evidence line, but you've criticized him kind of in return for uh, not having very much evidence to back up his claim that, that the Darwinian mechanism can actually do what it's supposed to do and create novel structures and body plans. What's an example of that? I mean, what, what sort of evidence does he cite that you don't think is, is sufficient, let alone overwhelming? Well, what we're talking about here, first of all, is not evolution in some general sense, change over time or changes within existing species. Those are uncontroversial. But what uh, Collins is claiming to provide uh, what he calls overwhelming evidence for is, quote, and this is a quote from his book, Darwin's theory of evolution, that is, descent from a common ancestor with natural selection operating on randomly occurring variations. So we have two elements to the theory, descent from a common ancestor and natural selection operating on random variations. For the second part, that is the mechanism, Collins basically cites minor changes within existing species. In other words, something completely uncontroversial, but something that does not get you to new species or new organs or new body plans. So he really hasn't provided any evidence that Darwin's theory explains the origin of species, which was the title of Darwin's book. Hmm. But what about this uh, this common ancestry uh, part of it? I mean, this seems to be, uh, this takes up a large part of, of the book. What evidence does he cite for common ancestry, even if he doesn't have very good evidence for his proposed mechanism? Well, he spends most of his time on the common ancestry issue, and he claims that evidence from the genome projects that he's quite familiar with is uh, strongly in support of common ancestry. What's interesting is that his argument is basically this. He looks at certain segments of DNA. He says, these segments have no function. Therefore, they were not put there by natural selection. They were simply inherited from a common ancestor. They're basically junk, junk DNA. And this is evidence of common ancestry. Well, it's interesting, first of all, that he, when he does that, he says, why would God have put that there, being as how it's junk? Well, to me, that's, that's very strange. Why would you argue for a scientific theory? Yeah, sort of a the theological of, argument for, uh, for exactly. Darwinism. <laughs> exactly. Darwin himself did it. But to me, it, it makes uh, Darwin's theory very fishy indeed. The other thing is, and this is more important to me as a scientist, Collins is arguing that these stretches of DNA have no function. And maybe they don't, but the more we learn about the genome, and he should know this in his position, the more we're finding that, in fact, these segments of DNA do have function. So, in effect, what he's doing, he claims that ID is a god of the gaps argument. What he's using is a Darwin of the gaps argument. He's saying, since we don't know the function of these segments, therefore, they come from a common ancestor. It turns out they do have function. His argument falls apart. So his defense of Darwinian evolution has to retreat with each new advance in our knowledge. In other words, Darwin of the gaps. Hmm. So you're saying he falls into the, the trap that he has said that ID basically falls into? Yes, it's the kettle calling the pot black, if you will. <laughs> well, I just have one, one final question for you. Um, I, you know, where do you, where's your assessment of where Colin stands on this overall spectrum of biblical creationism all the way to hardcore neo-Darwinism? Where does, you know, because he's presenting himself as, as sort of a Christian, sort of a, a Christian who believes in Darwinian evolution, where, where does he fit on this spectrum? Uh, uh, although he likes to call himself a theistic, evolution, a theistic evolutionist, I'm not sure that's quite accurate because we tend to think of that as, say, a God-guided process. You know, where, where do you think that he fits in? Well, I've never met uh, Francis Collins, so I don't know his personal views on this. All I know is what I read in the book. One thing that comes across in the book is, is the sincerity of his Christian belief. There's no question about it. But oddly enough, he, the title of his book is The Language of God, A Scientist Presents Evidence for Belief. Well, the language of God is the sequence of the DNA, and yet oddly enough, for him, that is not evidence for God or evidence for belief, because that's actually evidence for Darwinian evolution. So where he stands personally, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. He's certainly not a, a conservative biblical creationist by any means. I do think, from reading the book, that he's overly impressed by the evidence for Darwinian evolution, evidence that I think unravels the more we learn about it. 